morning everybody and Katribu. This is a uh, straight talk. And uh, this morning we have a uh, uh, special guest, uh, Budget Secretary Wendell Abisado, to talk about the country's budget and how the government is helping to uh, fund the anti COVID uh, campaign. Uh, Mr. Secretary, good morning. I'm Chito good Lusada. Morning. And I'm Good Joshua. morning, Chito. Good and morning, Joshua. Joshua. And I'm Joshua, sir. <laughs> How are Hi, you? Good morning. Good morning, sir. Sir, I, I, I would just like to ask uh, the, the government, let's get on with it. The government uh, budget deficit is estimated at around uh, uh, 8.5% from 7.5%. Uh, would you would you have uh, do do you think you can fund this through uh, revenues or do you have any other sources? Sir? Well, let me start by uh, saying that the the DBCC or the Development Budget Coordinating Committee yes sir um, was expecting uh, that our deficit will reach seven point five percent of GDP last year due to the combined impact of uh, the better than expected uh, emerging revenue collections and uh, lower program spending due to implementation delays brought about by the quarantine restrictions. Um, for this year, we are expecting to have an elevated but manageable deficit program of about 8.9% of GDP. So it's 8.9%. For this year, yes. Okay. Uh, mainly because we need uh, to support uh, a stronger government uh, uh, fiscal uh, standing uh, to restart uh, or in restarting our economy. Mm -hmm. In fact, the revised deficit program is slightly higher compared to the BSEF projection of 8.5% of GDP. As a result of the newly enacted laws that extended the validity of the appropriations under the fiscal uh, year 2020 General Appropriations Act, that is at least uh, uh, up to December uh, 31 of this year, and under Bayanihan 2 mm -hmm. up to June of uh, this year. Uh, the, if, if I may continue, Chito. Yes, sir. The Department Please. of Finance has uh, set out a clear strategy for financing our deficit. Uh, the government shall prioritize domestic borrowing by uh, following official development assistance and international capital markets. That's why we also float months. The DBCC determined that this plan is the most prudent approach ensuring sustainability in our debt service. Hopefully by 2022, the deficit will then significantly decline to about 7.3% as the government implements its fiscal consolidation strategy. And with the said strategy, the government will lessen the burden on national government borrowings and overall debt, gradually rebuilding the fiscal policy space as the economy recovers and revenue collections increase uh, over time. While there is an increase in the fiscal year 2021 deficit, it shall be noted that the emerging three-year average deficit is now lower at 7.9% of GDP compared to the previous average of 8.4% of GDP. The government will remain prudent in managing public expenditures to ensure long-term fiscal sustainability and the country's uh, debt profile remains sustainable over the medium term with fiscal, with fiscal risk, of course, and debt and liability management strategies in place. As a result, the expansion of the fiscal deficit this year is yes, tempered sir. to just 31.2 billion, where the fiscal year 2021 deficit is now projected to reach 1.781 trillion or about 8.9% of GDP. 
for the previously approved level of 1.75 trillion or 8.5 percent of uh, GDP. So, in a way, uh, we're trying to um, temper and uh, really do the best we can uh, to recover from uh, the effects of the pandemic, uh, Chito and Jaffa. Yes, sir. 1.71 trillion is a huge amount. How, how do you expect to bridge the gap, sir? Well, precisely, uh, we're uh, opening up possibilities in the case of the Department of Finance to uh, come up with uh, some uh, measures, either through internal or foreign borrowings. Uh, uh, our uh, credit rating is uh, pretty much acceptable to the international funding uh, in agencies or institutions like ADB and the World Bank. So we are not that, uh, uh, in a way, uh, uh, pessimistic that despite this, uh, yes, uh, we, we are uh, in, in, in a very difficult situation. In fact, uh, we're very hopeful and optimistic uh, on the other hand. Yes. So, what, what is the norm, Bas, uh, ano, during this uh, pandemic? Uh, I mean, in other countries, what's the percentage in terms of uh, the we, we, budget we really deficit? Do, yeah. Yeah, we really do a balancing balancing act, Chito. Mm -hmm. Like uh, while uh, we're holding on to the needs and providing for uh, the healthcare of our people, yes, we are also addressing our country's economy. Mm -hmm. And how to balance this is precisely the role of uh, the IATF yeah. in looking at options that are made available uh, every now and then. That's why even in the classification of uh, local government units, we see where we're going to. The economic managers would always say that, let's open up some more. Uh, mm -hmm. While on the other hand, the IATF is also looking at, at what cost would this be? Uh, summing up, uh, um, yes, sir. The deficit is always expected uh -huh. uh, to rise up at this time. Uh, even the U.S. deficit uh, yeah. really uh, yeah. recorded a record high, no? Uh -huh. uh, for that matter. So it's not only happening to us; it's happening uh -huh. all over the world. Okay, uh, Joshua, do you have a uh, follow-up okay. question? Sir, uh, in terms of macroeconomic assumptions, uh, does the DBCC see any need to revise? Uh, such, let's say, faster GDP growth, perhaps? In fact, uh, we are uh, consulting each other every now and then. Uh, but certainly, we needed uh, data on this. And uh, the yes, task uh -huh. is in the uh, Office of the National Economic and, and Development Authority. Uh, but um, let it be known that um, we are always uh, monitoring mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, behavior of our economy and and even those that would require a quick action on the part of uh, the DBCC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, among the key factors to support economic recovery was to further increase government spending. So, sir, how will the DBM ensure this to happen? Well, in fact, um, we've been... What? Not really accused, but uh, our attention was called that uh -huh. the government was underspending uh, uh -huh. last year. And so on the part of uh, DBM, the other uh, mandate being on uh, the issue of management, uh -huh. because yes, DBM is really the Department of Budget and Management. When we talk of budget, it talks about preparation and execution. When yes, we talk about management, we're looking at how all of these funds release to the various departments are being utilized and how fast are they using it. That's why we require them, each of these departments and agencies are required to submit a uh, budget utilization uh, report. And uh, the quickness uh, at how these departments uh, should uh, spend these funds is in the General Appropriations Act itself mm -hmm. because it serves as the order it's the release order already mm -hmm. for fast tracking spending and uh, to ensure implementation readiness. 
uh, and therefore uh, we rate them on the basis of their utilization mm -hmm. and we call their attention because they need to submit to us uh, that statement of appropriation, allotment, obligation, disbursement, and balances. Then we know if uh, these funds are, 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 are properly managed mm -hmm. and if they don't uh, really come up to the, with the standards or to the standards, we require them to come up with the catch up plans. Okay. Just so that government is able to spend the money that it has budgeted and approved by Congress and the ultimate president. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we are we uh, strictly implementing the cash budgeting scheme or yes. are we, uh, okay. So there's yes, no well, hybrid. But, yes, Chito, because there's, there's a, uh, an executive order on that. Okay. Meaning that the reason why we're um, planning and budgeting mm -hmm and appropriating and allotting yes, and obligating and disbursing is because we need to make sure that this money are spent for the purpose and mm. therefore the the life uh the lifespan of this budget is only for one year yes, so if we just allot and uh, don't spend the money what's the use of the purpose Mm. And therefore, uh, the president would like all the money is uh, released to be spent mm -hmm. at least up to the end of the year because that's the life cycle of the budget. And if they don't spend it, the funds Post will that. automatically revert to the national, national treasury. treasury. Yes. But so, otherwise, because of the pandemic, we have yes, this sir. combination mm -hmm. of cash uh, budgeting and um, obligation uh, mm -hmm. based uh, experience. Uh, spending of uh, the public funds because precisely of the extension of uh, Bayanihan 2 and uh, the 2020 General Appropriations Act. So there, there, there are a lot of uh, allegations about the insertions and uh, pork barrel in the budget. But since uh, we are in the cash budgeting scheme, so do you think that the uh, these uh, allegations are unfounded? Well, truth is, um, it is uh, within the ambit of uh, the mandate and the power of Congress to yes, make sir. adjustments. Uh, mm. But otherwise, if uh, these adjustments are introduced by Congress and do not form part of the national expenditure program, mm. then the president has the authority to subject them to review. Yes, sir. Because remember that when we present the national expenditure program, all of the projects, activities, and programs uh, included therein yes, have sir. gone through the process of planning and budgeting. Yes. And that therefore, since uh, these projects uh, introduced by Congress did not go through the process, then we need to classify them under for later release, which means that um, we will inform the agency concerned that uh, your budget has been increased uh, uh, more than what we have proposed under the National Expenditure Program mm -hmm. because of what we call the uh, con Congress Initiated uh, Amendment. Isn't that a uh, euphemism for pork barrel, Congress initiated amendments? I mean, because <laughs> those are, are the allegations of the, some of the yes, legislators. Yes. Of, mm -hmm. yes, but we would like to believe that precisely uh, their power includes uh, the transfer of one fund to the other. And in fact, they can even. Uh, make an office uh, not function by by uh, you know uh, taking uh, taking away the budget no yes, uh, um, appropriated or rather allotted for them but nonetheless uh, what we're saying precisely chito is yes, that sir. is why the president classified them under for later release because mm. then we'll have to inform the agency concerned that your budget has been i mean increased and these are the projects and therefore you need to go through the process of determining whether these projects 
are within the ambit of the trust and priorities of uh, the government, yes, whether your agency uh, is able to implement this uh, given your utilization rate, and third, whether these projects okay. are really implementation ready or shovel ready, uh, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. If you they pass the test, then we will not hesitate also mm -hmm. to provide the funds uh, necessary to implement the projects. Okay. This 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 is the uh, the safeguard, so to speak, uh, Chito, yes. that the executive department is doing, just so, so we avoid. Uh, uh, projects that are not really implementation ready or still in the planning stage and already uh, some money have been appropriated for that purpose. Yes. So the so absorption capacity is uh, crucial to that. Very uh, much. Joshua, yes. Joshua has a related question to that. Yeah. Uh, sir, among the issues faced by LGUs and other government agencies was their absorptive cap capacity. So, sir, right now, ano bang agency or uh, sector yung naglalag in terms of utilize, utilizing its appropriations. So, and how does the DBM intend to address it, sir? Well, uh, the General Appropriations Act itself provides for a provision where the any uh, and all uh, mm -hmm. national government agencies for that matter are given authority to engage uh, the local government units yes, sir. Uh, in a memorandum of agreement to be the one to implement these projects. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's really empowering the LGUs and whether we like it or not, uh, next year there's going to be an adjustment to be made in the uh, budgetary structure uh, of the government in view of uh, the Mandana's decision. Mm -hmm where uh, the local government units will now share uh, the income or the revenues collected by the Bureau of Internal Revenue and the Bureau of Customs. And so we will see some of uh, the major activities of the national government uh, getting to be devolved to the local government units for them to be the ones to already implement this uh, programs, uh, activities, and projects. Uh, uh, what what particular uh, activities would this be, sir? Well, local uh, local infrastructure, you have uh, agriculture, you have social welfare, mm -hmm. you have uh, health, um, and livelihood. Mm -hmm. All of this that can really be done already by the local government units. What's the uh, mm, okay? Yeah. What's the process, sir? Uh, all all of the funds, the IRA funds will uh, increase, or there will be another uh, a funding uh, mechanism for that. The IRA itself will be increased. The IRA itself, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, the IRA. How much? Because uh, now they will uh, an average of I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, twenty. Uh, percent, twenty more. percent mm. from from what uh, the current era. The current era is about how much? How many that's uh, that's uh, forty percent. Uh, Fourteen for all local government units, and they share that among themselves. That would be a substantial amount, then. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, sir. Uh, that is why, and that is why since there will be no other funding source also that is now being uh, usually uh, implemented by the national government, then the natural consequence would really be that it will now be the role of the local government units to implement the projects, activities, and programs uh, themselves. <laughs> Isn't that the concept of uh, federalism in, uh, at work, sir? With, with the <laughs> higher... I know you it's, support uh, federalism. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the system, hopefully, we, it the, will lead towards system. that. But let's just call it uh, local autonomy. Local autonomy. And decentralization. Yeah. Okay, Joshua. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, former NEDA Secretary uh, Ernesto Pernia and former BSP Deputy Governor Liwa Guinigundo earlier criticized the increase in 2021 budget. So, sir, how confident is the government 
that the past 2021 budget will suffice for its needs for this year. Uh, But, sir, before you answer that question, um, we'll take a short break. Araneta City, home to the country's first indoor shopping mall, the world's original thriller, and the first ever Beanie Beanie pageant. Now a place for your first win, your first catch, your first home, your first big break, your first date, and even your first love. Araneta City, the city of firsts. That's it, never thought self-service can be this slick Modify plans and a snap, walang hirap is a wrap Just tap the app, now you can check, view, subscribe, renew Help and support for you Out with the ring ring apps or the in thing, you know what to do Globe at home and Globe One, all in the Globe app na yan Self-service and easy to use, mas okay tayo dyan Globe at home and Globe One, all in the Globe app na yan Instant response, no hold time pa, wala nang hintayan Download Globe at Home and Globe One app, all in the Globe app na yan Download the Globe One and Globe at Home apps from Google Play Store and Apple App Store now Download Globe at Home and Globe One app, all in the Globe app na yan Fiber is the free and secure way to connect with friends and family anywhere Send messages and make phone and video calls for free Download Viber now. Okay. So, and we're back to straight talk. So, let me repeat our question. So, um, sir, former NEDA Secretary Ernesto Pernia and former BSP Deputy Governor Diwa Guinigundo earlier criticized the 2021 budget. So, how confident is the government that the, that the past 2021 budget will suffice for its needs for this year? So, let's... Uh, Well, if, if I may call on my Chief of Staff, uh -huh. Assistant Secretary Kim Robert De Leon, because he impacts it uh, with the technical working group of the uh -huh. uh, DBCC. Um, he can provide some inputs on this, uh, Asik Kim. Good morning, Asik. Good morning. Good morning, Asik. Hi, good morning, Chito and Joshua. Uh, it, with regard to the sufficiency of the 2021 budget to... Uh, respond to the needs of the country. Of course, the DBCC as an interagency committee considers several uh, indicators in coming up with the level of our budget, which includes among others the level of the GDP as projected by the mm -hmm. National Economic and Development Authority, as well as our capacity to incur uh, debts and obligations yes. with the net effect to our deficit as calculated as well by by the department of finance so from from those uh, macroeconomic indicators not uh, withstanding as well other external pressures that we are also estimating with the help of the banco central those are the main uh, indicators that we use in setting up our budget level so this is a calculated uh, calculated level that was uh, 
arrived at after considering these factors. But nevertheless, we also have the extension of the 2020 GAA as well as the extension of the remaining appropriations under Bayanihan 2, which amounts to around uh, 170 billion. So altogether, this will contribute further to what is already appropriated in the 2021 GAA. So, uh, so there's three budget that uh, that will help uh, uh, relieve the country's uh, problem with the COVID. Bayanihan two, the extended budget, and this year's budget. Is yes, Bayanihan two is extended up to June 30, and the 2020 GAA is extended up to December 31, 2021. Mm -hmm. Would that be enough to fund the uh, uh, anti uh, anti COVID uh, campaign? Well, for the anti COVID campaign, um, we have in fact already stated this previously, and for uh, our show today, we're saying that the government has uh, prepared and allocated a total of 82.5 billion pesos mm -hmm. to cover for the purchase of uh, the required vaccines uh, to be implemented as soon as possible time. And our uh, vaccine czar and uh, our Secretary of Health have been doing uh, everything they can to make sure that we can have at least a good number of uh, doses of these vaccines uh, made available uh, at the earliest time possible as directed by the president, yes. So we, we, we don't use the SARO anymore, isn't it, uh, Mr. Secretary? Well, there, for, because uh, there's, there's, some, there's a lot of uh, complaints about the delay in the release of uh, government funds, primarily on subsidies. Well, um, for subsidies, um, it will have to go through the process because yes, they will need to uh, submit the special budget request, the budget execution documents, um, oh, wow. and uh, uh, in fact, for purposes of uh, making sure that um, the the support that we provide for the uh, marginalized sectors are uh, classified as for comprehensive uh, release and even for those of uh, the Department of Health just to make sure that there's not going to be uh, delays in uh, the uh, procurement and acquisition of the required uh, uh, vaccines and other goods and services of uh, the departments of the government, uh, Chito and uh, Joshua. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank we have a lot of questions from our uh, viewers thank and the netizens. Uh -huh. uh, Joshua, can can you give some mm. of them? Sir, there's a common query in the comment section, and it's regarding the release of pension differentials for retired military and uniformed personnel. Sir, I understand mm. that the DBM posted its statement on the website about it, but sir, can when can these beneficiaries expect this increase? Can you provide yeah, a timetable, sir? We fully understand and mm -hmm. commiserate with our pensioners. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, uh, this uh, differential um, is supposed to be for uh, 2018 yet. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Although we received uh, uh, a copy of the favorable mm -hmm. uh, opinion, from the Department of Justice uh, only last year. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we provided for uh, uh, the amount in the 2020 uh, uh, budget. However, uh, the, the legislature uh, cut through all of uh, this uh, uh, a lot or rather allocation that we that we've made yes, and uh, for this year um, of the 172 uh, mm -hmm. billion that we have allocated 
for pension and gratuity, this was reduced by 20 billion mm -hmm. down by uh, down from 172 to 152. Mm -hmm. In terms of prioritization, uh, we will need to uh, comply first with the pensions and gratuities of the regular uh, 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 pensioners, which includes them, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, however, this differential for those who have not yet received is something that we're still working on, particularly on the source of funds, because um, I was telling uh, the Speaker of the House that because of this, uh, Congress needs to pass a supplemental budget uh -huh. because um, our uh, approved budget for pension and gratuity would not be sufficient uh -huh. to pay all of the required amounts for the differential of uh, the pensioners who uh, benefited from the indexation uh, that happened in 2018. And so we're appealing to the pensioners to uh, please hold on and um, give us a little more time because we did our best for two straight years 2020 and 2021 but uh, you know uh, we cannot do more than what we can because uh, uh, it's always congress uh, that yes, we sir. have the last say in um, determining uh, which amount is going to be deducted from and added to oh. and all the other uh, actions that uh, Congress in the exercise of uh, their uh, power uh, of the purse would do so. And so, um, but we are not um, uh, perturbed by this. Uh, we will continue to look for other ways and means just so that we're able to uh, respond to these needs of our pensioners and uh, and those that have been affected by the reduction in the budget for pension and gratuity. Is uh, Congress uh, receptive to your proposal for a supplement budget? Very much, very much. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, if there's going to be a, since there's being planned a supplemental budget, uh, we will make sure uh, this, this will be included uh, within the year. Within uh, the year, okay. Okay. Uh, sir, another suggestion um, cited by netizens is to eradicate corruption. Secretary, what's your take on abolishing some government offices, especially since there is a planned devolution of um, of certain national government functions to LGU? So, sir, what's also what's the status of the draft EO for this, sir? I certainly agree with uh, the suggestion of the netizen. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I see in the governance commission for mm -hmm. government owned and controlled corporations and then a lot of talks have been uh, uh, going uh, the rounds uh, of the uh, strategy whether it's going to be a downsizing or uh, right sizing or abolishing or merging and all of the other combinations and i i, I really agree that uh, you know especially at this time of the pandemic um not too many people would report to work anymore mm -hmm. uh, they're just uh, at home right. and and that therefore uh about a half of the entire uh, workforce are uh, at work on a 15-day basis and then the other half will again be the one to substitute them for the next 15 days and yes, yet, sir. government is functioning. Uh, all the requirements uh, for the government to operate uh, are there. So you can just see that, why not? When uh, things can be simplified, especially when we go into digitization yes, and, uh, and automation, uh, why not? Uh, but let me say also that the right sizing of agencies is part of uh, the devolution transition mm -hmm. uh, plan of agencies. Yes, and in fact, uh, those that will be affected by the implementation of the Mandana's uh, decision will mm -hmm. have to also mm -hmm. look into 
how much more employees do they need mm -hmm. now that uh, their functions have been devolved? Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, we have proposed a uh, an executive order on this, and uh, it has been uh, submitted to the various departments and agencies of the of the government. And uh, we will be presenting this to uh, the president in light precisely of the Mandana's decision and the need for government uh, to look into its uh, current workforce and what should be done uh, mm -hmm. in light of uh, the fact that there's not much resources that's going to be available at the national level anymore as before. Because next year, unless any other um, reason would uh, come into the picture uh, that would derail further, which I hope uh, we will not have uh, the uh, implementation of the Mandana's decision, then we are uh, uh, on that view and towards that direction that uh, the government really need to uh, uh, look into the current uh, uh, um, personal structure mm -hmm. and organizational structure and the number of workforce needed uh, for government to continue to operate at the national level. That's the content of the your proposed uh, executive order, Mr. Secretary. May timetable po ba sir? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, we're, we're working on it. Uh, in fact, we've been working on it since uh, last year yet. Okay. Yeah. And then, sir, uh, before we end, uh, sir, since nalalapit na ang 2022 elections, um, Diretsahana, sir, do you have any plans to go for any electoral position next year, sir? <laughs> wala po. <laughs> uh, wala po. Uh, dito lang po ako. You're staying uh, sa DBM. Uh, po, dito lang po ako inilagay ni Presidente. Mm -hmm. Gusto kong uh, tapusin lang ang uh, okay. trabaho ko po. Opo. Uh, on that note. On that note, sir, baka ano po kayo may final yeah, uh, ano po. Mm -hmm. Uh, closing yes, remarks, I'm appealing, sir. Yes, I'm, I'm appealing to our fellow Filipinos. Let's continue to have faith in our government. We elected the president and he got the mandate. At least, uh, can we just wait until the next election? Then if there's mm -hmm. another one who should succeed him, then let's elect him or her for that matter. And then... Uh, Life should go on. Uh, we are facing all of these problems, not only us, but the entire world. So what we're asking is for your understanding and mm -hmm. patience. Mm -hmm. uh, let's give all these efforts a chance because if, you know, we're still doing it and then everybody would shoot at it, yeah. how can we really push through with all of this? No? In fact, uh, we're racing against time to, to get all of these vaccines that we need. Yeah, I Please, guess. Uh, we plead for understanding uh, from our people. And what I can assure you is uh, we're taking care of the funds of the government. And we will make sure that these are uh, spent in accordance mm -hmm. uh, with its purpose. Well, so Thank uh, you very much. So with that, uh, Joshua. Oh. So, sir, uh, with that, uh, thank you for your time. and Thank you, too, for morning. this opportunity to, to join you. Mm -hmm. Good morning, sir. See you again in uh, straight talk. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless.